Okay, turn it. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, we're going to replace a bad valve lifter on this Chevy 5.3 Vortec engine. So, we'll try to video whatever we can here. First thing, let's remove this intake cover. This one just pulled right off. We want to disconnect the negative battery terminal here. So we're going to disconnect that. All we need is, a, I believe, a 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to back that off, pull that off the battery, and just tuck it behind there so that doesn't make contact with it. So we need to remove the pressure from the fuel system. So right here, we remove this cap. And we're just going to use a little flathead screwdriver. You're going to push down, and it's like an air valve almost. Uh, you're going to push down on the top of that. And then take some rags while you're pushing it. And the rags will become soaked with gasoline. But once the pressure is relieved, I'll go ahead and I'll replace that cap. Next thing we want to do is drain the coolant on the rad. There'll be this little drain pipe here. I put a bucket under here just to capture the coolant as it drips out. And we'll replace that once we're finished. I'm just going to remove the one cylinder head today. We have one bad lifter. The engine's pretty old. Don't want to put a lot of money into the truck, but it's going to be over a thousand dollars to do just the lifter. Probably a couple of thousand to do them all. So it's number four cylinder that's not working. I'm going to replace both of the active fuel management lifters. All the parts came to about $250 Canadian, including the intake gaskets. You'll see the parts. Let's go ahead and remove the air intake manifold first. Let's just remove the PCV inlet hose here. Do that first. That just pulls out. On the V8, we've got to remove this air intake or the radiator hose clip it looks like it's on mine it's already broken so there removal complete um, you're going to want to pull that clip out i'll try and fix that so we want to remove our air intake we have a couple of clamps to remove one there there's one there Take the side off of the filter housing first. And we'll come out and do the other side. It just pulls off like a grommet. Okay, and there we go. I'll take the opportunity to clean a lot of these parts. You know, why not? Well, we got them apart. Next, we will have to remove the alternator it means we're going to undo these little clips and undo this battery connector back here and then remove the bolts you'll notice I made this little tiny scaffolding out of my now useless tires they have to go to the dump anyway so let's get in and out of there quick so this is a 10 millimeter socket right here. Let's go ahead and get that off. You can do this much quicker if you're not holding a camera. By the way. All right. Let's put that nut back on there so that we don't lose it. Okay. And then we just have this little clip. Looks like this just clips down and pulls out. Yeah. Here we are. You know, it's just a matter of removing these alternator bolts. Okay, first of all, we've got to remove this belt. But using a 15 millimeter socket, just stretch this down a bit. 
Okay, pull the bolt loose and slowly let go. Now, this is also a good time to check your belt. But basically, if it looks like it's in good condition, this one seems pretty good, you're looking for cracks on this side and you're looking for cracks on the outside as well. You check online and make sure you can uh, be resourceful and make sure yours is okay. If not, replace it. Now use that same 15 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts right here. We can just pry this up. I've already started a bit. Let's see. There we go. Let's get that side up. So don't pry too hard. Just go nice and easy and it'll work itself out. Again, I'm going to put these bolts back in here so they don't get lost more organized than me, then, you know, just don't notice them, okay? So I have these tools here for the fuel line. We pulled off our little steel clip. This was in like this. Okay. The insulation will be just reverse and it'll just pop down to hold it in place. So we pop it up at the back. I use the screwdriver, lift it up and pull it out. And then we use our fuel line attachment. Let's see which one it is. This blue one, and it just pushes in. Okay, so we got our tool in. Basically, you slide that tool inside the collar, pull them apart, and it comes loose. All right. In this case, we use the 3 8 fuel line remover. Amazon, if you don't have one. Probably about eight or nine bucks for the kit. Now we're just going to. I'm just going to check for any other lines that are still connected. Let's remove all the injector connectors. Just to be safe, I'll label these. This is number two. Pull the little green connector up, okay, pop it up, and then you just push this down to release it. Okay. This looks like it twists out. Loosen the intake manifold bolts in one quarter turn increments in the reverse order of the tightening sequence. Eight millimeter. Quarter turn. Starting at number one right here. Quarter turn. That would be 90 degrees. A quarter turn. Number two is right across the street here. And right in the middle, third one in. Okay. There we go, that's quarter turn. Number three is right beside number two. this till you can hand loosen them. I'm getting pretty close to that. So before we pull the manifold off I've got the brake vacuum line tucked under. I've moved the wires out of the way. I'm going to pull the bolts out and I'm going to label this piece of cardboard. I'm going to quickly put the numbers on there. One, two. I'll take the bolts out and put them in their spots. There's four, ten, 
do some sort of a clip around the eighth bolt. I think I'm going to slide it out to the back of that clip. Let me see. Yeah, that's just there's a clip in the back on number eight. You can just um, slide that to the back, and it will come right out of the clip. Now let's pull this intake off of here, shall we? So let's pull straight out. It's coming. Pull in it too hard, just take your time. Not a race. There we go. One intake manifold with a vacuum hose from the brake line all tangled up. Just get that out of the way. Okay, probably blow all this out. Clean it. I'll jam something, just some towels on those ports, and I'm going to blow it out before I take anything else off. I don't want anything to get in there. I'm just going to put a piece of paper towel on each of these ports here. This is, <laughs> don't forget them there. I just don't want any debris getting into the ports. Let's blow that out, and I'll pull off this top of it shortly. I'm making the assumption that because it's just one lifter that's not working, and not both, that our solenoid is fine. You never know. So we need to start by removing the coil packs which is really just a matter of pulling out bolts, just four of them, two, three, four. Okay, let's get, uh, looks like a 10 mil. Let's get in there and do that. Ten mil, and then we always have to remove this bracket for the coolant hoses, the nut on top, and then you have to take the bolt off. Both 10 mils, I think. One, two, three, four. Anyway. Okay, now I've got the bolts off. This should just lift right out. There we are. We'll move that coil pack assembly, then we'll take the rocker arm cover off. Um, I'm gonna, these are the new lifters. I got two for cylinder four. I'm gonna do them both. I guess I could have done the other two as well, but like I said, it's an old engine and you want to spend a ton of money on it. They're only about $50 each, so it would have been another 100 bucks. Realistically, it would have been better to do all of the lifters, but that would include a whole other head, another head gasket, and all the product and labor that comes with that. And you know what? Let's just get this thing working. What I'm going to do is take, I'm going to take these two lifters. I'm going to fill these little bags up with oil to let them soak while we're finishing the rest. I want to just soak them in oil. Uh, so that they have oil penetrated within the mechanism there. All right, rock arm covers off next. 